Hey everybody, today we're going to be talking about ICFs, Insulated Concrete Forms. I like them and I want you to know what the heck this is. This is going to be a game changer if you're an owner builder and you want to be more independent and do your own thing. And what I try to do is I try to bring you the best information I can get. I'm going to find you an expert on it. So today I've driven a couple of days, gone up north. And we're going to see a friend of mine who's been doing this for a long time. And we're going to talk about ICFs. So driving for two days, the reason being, I want to come introduce you to a friend of mine named Joey Hughes. Now, Joey Hughes has been building with ICFs for how long have you been building with them? Over 20 years. 20 years. Okay, that's why I'm coming to you because I want for you to tell these people what you know and asset that ICFs can bring to their build. There's a lot of advantages with ICFs. Now he's a big old guy. I thought they made him big in Texas, but he's from the biggest state there is. Where are you from? From Alaska. So Joey, now I want to talk to you about the value of ICFs. Tell me what, why I would want to use this and why somebody else would want to use this. What is the asset? to use an ICFs. These things are cost effective. The biggest advantage of ICFs is one, you're building in a shorter amount of time. No building of forms like with wood forms or with metal forms, which you have to come back and tear down. If you're not an experienced concrete crew, a lot of places won't rent you the forms. So these, you don't have to strip forms. These are the forms. They are the forms. Is there a cost savings to using ICFs? Now, when the codes are actually put in place and enforced, ICFs are actually a cheaper, more cost-effective alternative to those energy standards. All right, and you guys know that I'm all about energy efficiency, but also cost efficiency too. That's the value that I'm trying to portray with what I do, that we can have a tighter envelope and more energy efficient, and also for the same cost. Also, building time is a huge deal for me. So the cost of labor is reduced. How fast can these go up? Typically with ICFs, because you're minimizing steps in the building process, you're building in quarter to half the time of any conventional building system. A quarter of the time. So that's the true savings. That is one of the things I really want to bring to you guys is that this can happen fast. The other thing is, can people do this themselves? Absolutely. If you're a home builder, this is going to be a game changer for you. This is an ICF, insulated concrete form. Insulated because it's got the styrofoam insulation. What is the insulation on this? The insulation value on this block right here is R18. Under current energy code, we have to insulate and isolate for thermal bridging your stem walls and all of your either basements or your crawl spaces now have to be insulated at least to an R10. This is the structure because we are also mandated to have at least an R10 on the interior and the exterior of all of your concrete forms. So this already has that. That already has that. So it exceeds the building codes that are currently in place. What is this right here? This is what they call a web. In this case, it happens to be a plastic web. And they vary in size. This one here is an 8-inch web. And this one here is a six inch wood. Right here, what is this? The purpose of those right there is for interlocking rebar into the block. So as you're stacking, you're snapping your rebar in place. So that's going in like that. Mm -hmm. All right. Now typically on the wall, you're doing a brick pattern. Correct. You just put them in place, they lock together like Legos. We're stacking blocks like giant Legos. What do you do with the rebar? You're gonna snap your horizontal rebar in place, place your next block. Just like Legos. Just going down here, you snap it in. Do you have to wire tie that? You do not have to tie those. So it's a whole lot faster. Correct. One of the huge advantages of using an ICF versus using a traditional form is you do not have to strip the forms, you do not have to clean the forms, you handle them one time and you're done. IECC 2012, that was a game changer where we had to do blower door tests, we had to up the ante on tighter envelopes, we had to put in more insulation, and we had to size HVAC uh, correctly. Correct. I actually started out in the HVAC industry, and when I started 
uh, at that time, what we were doing was heat load calculations on homes. Are, were you only working with uh, traditional stick-built houses? Everything that we pretty much ran into was either a log home or, for the most part, traditional stick frame. So if you're looking for an energy-efficient home, but you were doing the, what was it? The it's called the heat load calculation. So basically at that time what happened was we went back to the software engineer and uh, we took our program and said, okay, what are we doing wrong? And basically what he did is he said, well, there's a couple different ways of doing it. He said, main thing comes down to air sealing. What do you mean air sealing? What is just, you're sealing off the air or what are you talking about? What you're doing is you're limiting the amount of air that passes through the building through the exterior what are you walls. calling that let's see I'm, I'm, air infiltration so air infiltration and this is where blower door tests come into okay so you're doing this long before that correct all right and now we are in energy code of uh, 2018 is adopted by many right now so how does this perform with uh the current blower door tests that are mandatory? for you? just like back then before those codes went into place or went into effect icfs far exceeded the current building code standards so at the time you were doing energy calculations to get a five-star rating trying to do that with typical stick signal framing, framing yep. and log homes and even log homes we had a lot of people that were okay. you know that were under the assumption that they were energy efficient as well um, and basically what the software engineer did was he came back to us and he said it all comes down to the building envelope. He said, if you don't have a sound building envelope that has uh, basically uh, zero air infiltration and thermal breaks, and that was the key thing there was thermal breaks. Is it just the outside of the house? What is it? The building envelope basically is considered the exterior portion of the structure. Uh, all your exterior walls, your windows, your doors, all those things um, make up your building envelope. What we were finding was that the traditional building envelope, which most people live in homes that are constructed with two by sixes or, or some two by two by fours, two by eights, uh, so on and so forth, they are not built to the standard that gives you a sound building envelope. Um, it doesn't provide the most energy efficiency. And one of the biggest reasons for it, not only is the air infiltration that goes on throughout you know, uh, the life of that home, but as well, there's no thermal breaks. If you were to take a thermal imaging camera and put it on an exterior of a house, you could actually see all the studs inside of a house. Um, if, if you'd see all the warm areas, all the cool areas, and it would identify where the thermal transfers were occurring. So the thermal transfer in an ICF and, and styrofoam is much slower How about an experienced labor force? How experienced does your labor force have to be? That's one of the advantages of this, whether it's the do-it-yourself or, or it's the contractor who's just getting started with ICS. You don't have to have an experienced labor force. You don't have to have somebody who's gone through vocational school or some kind of uh, apprenticeship in order to build with an ICS. Is there a license? There use? is no additional licensing required besides a standard concrete licenses in most counties or states. So in a place where there's not a lot of experienced labor force with ICFs, how easy is it for someone to get to speed? Do they need to go to, a, is there training that they need to go to? There is training available. It's not necessarily something you need to go to. Most of what you need to learn about how to build with an ICF can be done online. However, if you're in, a, say, a rural area or an area like we are here, uh, where you have, you know, maybe not the labor force that you necessarily would on, you know, in certain other parts of the country, um, you don't have to have a huge labor force. That's one of the advantages with ICFs. Our typical crews are three to five people, depending on the size and scope of the project. Biggest asset to an ICF is, in the long run, they cost less to own and maintain. The asset, from my point of view as a builder, is the asset is how fast they go up, so you're eliminating your time and materials uh, costs, but also you're saying that the biggest asset is in the long term. The end user, they have the benefit of a home where they don't have to do near as much maintenance to keep it up. They're also bulletproof. Bulletproof, bombproof, hurricane proof, hurricane fire proof, tornado proof, soundproof. Soundproof, okay, I never even thought about the sound thing. So that soundproof, they're bulletproof, they're hurricane proof. Mm -hmm. Any climate 
that you think is better suited for using ICFs? The funny thing is, since I've been doing this, and, and granted, I started originally in Alaska, which is, a, this is one of the coldest climates yeah. uh, you know, in the United States. What most people fail to realize is ICFs, the booming industry, is actually in the South. Down in Arizona, southern states, Alabama, Georgia, places like that, there's huge ICF uh, markets down there, neighborhoods. Um, California, you see a lot of ICF homes in California strictly because of the issue of the wildfires. It's not necessarily just a cold weather climate. And when people start thinking about energy efficiency, they always think about winter, but they fail to realize the energy efficiency that you gain in the summertime with air conditioning or keeping a house cool and comfortable. Um, this, is this affected by humidity? Not affected at all by humidity. That's one of the advantages. You don't have a material that's going to mold, rot, or deteriorate because of the moisture in the environment. So you have the built-in vapor barrier, mm -hmm. your structure, and your forms, and your time and labor is cheaper. It goes up faster. You don't have the material degradation that you do for a three to four month dry-in time. Correct. So you pour the concrete in the forms, they have their insulation in place, and that is there for the duration of the build and for the lifetime of the home. And so that makes building in a cold environment, you can work inside and as soon as it's dried in, you're in an insulated environment from the day that you start. Correct. And as far as why people aren't building with them, it comes down to a lack of knowledge. And the building industry is very, very slow to adopt anything new. Correct, it is very slow to, to adopt anything new or react to changes, um, you know, especially when you think about it, you know, if your grandfather, and, and I love my grandfather to death, but if you've learned generation after generation how to do certain things one specific way, and you know, they have that saying, you can't teach an old dog new tricks, and then you're the young pup coming into the situation, you got some great idea. I've been in this boat, I've done it for years. My dad was a contractor. We butted heads, you know, I'm going, hey, there's a better way of doing it. And he just recently visited and he goes, man, you always love to play with Legos. So on that, I, I get that, that people don't want to learn something new. They don't want to take on a new skill set. They've got their established skill sets. And, but uh, that's why we're bringing this to you because this is something that you can do. You can learn, you can do your research and you can find out how to do this. You can find a local supplier. There are a lot of different companies out there, so there's suppliers available anywhere in the country. I want you guys to always be pushing to find, I think that's why you're watching this channel anyway, is you wanna find if something's good, is there something better? Yes, that there's a reason why we don't still live in caves, because we're learning, and we're always pushing the envelope, and I want you guys to find something that works for you. ICFs, in remote locations, owner builds, you can do this, it's easy. So here we are on another building site using insulated concrete forms. Now, one of the great advantages here is they go up fast. You don't have to build any forms, you don't have to pull any forms, you leave them in place after the pour. Now, on a typical concrete retaining wall, you would also, because of our energy codes, you have to isolate and insulate the inside and the outside of your retaining wall, your stem wall has to have insulation on it, at least an R10 in most places. This already has it in place, move on. The savings is in the labor. No building forms, no pulling forms, already insulated, insulated concrete forms. So Joey, is there anything else you wanna tell these people of why they should look into ICFs for their building? I think the biggest thing I would tell anybody who's looking into building a home or even a commercial building for that matter is explore all the possibilities. You have all these new alternative building methods out there. I can't tell you they're all good because there's a lot of them out there. They're misleading. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of fads out there and trends out there that I highly recommend against. One thing I'll tell you is ICFs have been proven time and time again um, for decades at this point in time. They work. And don't be afraid to ask questions. And if you have somebody who doesn't give you or have the answers you're looking for, go find the right person. You're right. You're right. I believe that too. All right, Greg. Great information. Thanks, Joe Hughes. You're welcome. Thank All you. All right. Man. Thanks for meeting me. You guys need to look this up. And if you need to, you can contact Joe Hughes. He'll be down below. I'll put a link to his stuff. And you can start looking up his channel. So we've talked about ICFs today. It's a great solution for your build. Now go build it. Better. <laughs> the 
now we'll build it. That. So under current installation, <laughs> so under <laughs> insulated concrete forms.